Are tool trucks even relevant in 2023? Well, that's a discussion we're gonna have today, so let's dive into it. All right, guys, like I said in my intro, uh, are tool trucks even relevant in 2023? That's a topic we're going to discuss today, and I know it's going to be super controversial. As a matter of fact, the reason why we don't even discuss prices on the tool trucks anymore is just because of the negative comments that come from this channel. The people always say, oh, you overpaid for this, you paid too much for that, this is made by blah, 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 that's made by this company, this is made by this company. So we've just kind of cut out the price and talk on the channel. Um, I always try to feature the best tools. Quite frankly, my top 10 list did not include not a single tool truck tool, surprisingly. And this is the first time I've ever done a top 10 list that didn't have at least one tool truck tool in it. Um, so today I want to kind of discuss a little bit about the fate of the tool trucks in the world we live in are they even relevant anymore with everything that you can purchase online and amazon and all of these places is it even worth a truck coming to your shop each week like i say this is a super controversial topic and i'm going to give you my opinion and we all know what opinions are but in my personal opinion i believe tool trucks are extremely relevant there are several factors that go into deciding to purchase a tool. Obviously, if you pay for a tool truck tool, you are paying a premium cost of it. Does it cost snap on $375 to build that half inch flex head ratchet? Absolutely not. There's costs that come into everything involved in a tool truck from the manufacturer of the tools to getting their name put on it, to having it shipped to their warehouse and packaged with their name on it. Then it go into the tool truck driver. The tool truck driver then has to sell it to the customer. All of those are costs that are associated with it. But the problem is people forget about the service that comes along with the tool truck. Obviously, when you can touch and feel a tool, you can see kind of a little bit more about it, obviously, than looking at a picture on Amazon. Um, we've all been burnt by the Amazon bug before where we purchase something, it come in, it's not the size that we thought it was. It's definitely not the quality we thought it was. And quite frankly, you end up purchasing a better one at a later time. Therefore, you just threw your money away. When you can touch it and fill it on a tool truck, it adds value to the product, in my opinion, because you know exactly what you're getting. That comes with a service, and obviously service costs money. That's why, you know, you spend a little extra to go to the fancy restaurants with a better service and the valet parking and all of that junk. But when it comes to tools, it's the exact same thing. Now, I hear a lot of people fussing about the price of the tools on a tool truck. I get it, I understand completely. A prime example, let's say you want the blue Matco pry bars, but you don't wanna spend the outrageously expensive price for the Matco name to be put on your pry bar. Since it is made by Mayhew, it's the exact same thing. It carries the exact same warranty. There's where supplemental tools come in favor for us as mechanics. Now, your tool truck guy may not want to sell you the supplemental tools because he has the Matco name or the Cornwell name or the Snap-on name on the truck. That's up to him whether he wants to close the sale or not. But if you'd rather save about $200 on the set of pry bars, you can get him to order you the Mayhew set and you get the exact same pry bars. The same thing applies with the pliers. As you can see, this is a pair of 10 inch Canipex Cobras and it's got the tiny laser etched Matco symbol here as well as the Matco name here. Now I did pay more money for this pair of pliers than purchasing just the Knipex brand by themselves. I purchased these from Atco Michael. Obviously that comes with a cost. They have to put their name on it. They have to put their name here. That way they know that they're warranting the tools they sell. I get it. Plus since Knipex makes the pliers, Matco purchases them from Knipex, has all this stuff put on them, sends them to the tool truck guy, they mark it up. Where in turn, 
if you have your dealer, just order the Knipex version without the Matco logo on it, you're going to save some money. Exact same tool made in the exact same factory. The difference is when you break your Knipex that you purchased off of your Matco truck, your Matco guy will give you another pair. Obviously, if you're purchasing just the Knipex brand, once they're wore out, that's considered the life of the tool and you have to rebuy it. Can you buy two pair of these for the same cost? Absolutely. So that's a factor you have to decide for yourself. Is it worth it, the difference in the cost? Other options that they can do, instead of buying the tool truck brand, you can buy the trusty cook brand, as you see I have here. It is the exact same hammer that's sold on some of the tool trucks at a far less cost. It does carry a lifetime warranty. Your dealer may have his tool truck brand sold on his truck. If you don't want to pay that price because there is a markup to have their name put on them, ask them to order the supplemental tool catalog that they choose to purchase from and you can get the trusty cook brand way cheaper for way less money so keep that in mind when you're pricing tools on the truck i touched on the warranty a while ago and that's a huge thing if you guys know i'm a huge fan of the noco jump boxes now this is the gb 150 they do have the gbx 50 155 that is the equivalent to this one um there's a known issue with the gbx 155 if you run the battery down below the charge level the battery pack itself will not take a charge it's a known problem and it's something that i believe noco's tried to cover up over time um the difference is when you hook this one to your vehicle it supplies power for three seconds to allow you to start your vehicle the GBX 155, when you hook it up, it applies power for one minute. The difference is this one only applies power once it fills the drain of the starter. So you have three seconds of cranking. It's not as easy to run this one down below the acceptable recharge level. It is the GBX 155 because once you hook it to the battery, it's giving you one minute of power going into your battery, it will drop it down below the acceptable charge rate. So the packs won't recharge. If you purchase this pack from a tool dealer, it's easy to get a warranty. You simply hand it back to the guy, you get a brand new one, life goes on, everybody's happy. Try sending this back to NOCO, seeing how long it's gonna take and how much you're going to pay for shipping. There is added value to tool trucks. So always keep stuff like that in mind because if you have tools, they will wear out, they will break, and you will have to warranty them. Other options are like this Maxion light. I've showed it before on my channel. This is the Cyclops light. The first one I ever bought of these was branded Snap-on. It was a great light, but I spent a little over 120 bucks on that light where this one, well, you could buy about three to four of them for the same cost. So keep that in mind when you're looking at tools on a tool truck. Um, and if your tool truck guy doesn't have that or doesn't carry this brand, you can always ask him to get it for you. That's another advantage of having a tool truck. They've got the resources to source the tools that you need and obviously get the tools you want. And you can touch them feel them, lick them, smell them, chew on them. However you decide that the tool is worth purchasing, you can do that on the tool truck before making that purchase. That's added value. So like I mentioned several times already, all the tool trucks have the access to get the tools you need, such as the Koken nut grip sockets, the Koken ratchet, the Koken hex grips, all of that. They can order these tools in for you and get them at a better price than most of the time you would buy them online simply because they're a wholesale dealer and they can get the tools much cheaper. So I know a lot of you is gonna say, well, I don't like giving extra money to the tool truck guy because whatever reason you wanna save your money. You still have to remember at the end of the day, they are a small business. They're a local business. Now take that with consideration if you have a good tool truck guy or not. In a lot of the comments I see, my tool truck guy doesn't show up weekly. He doesn't want to warranty my tools. I call him, he won't come by the shop. 
Those guys let Darwinism take its effect and eventually they'll be out of business and hopefully you'll get a new tool dealer. I'm not asking you to support tool dealers that don't want to work for you, but there's tons of excellent, excellent tool dealers in this world that will go out of their way to make sure they show up weekly, get the tools you need, service the tools that you bought and take care of you in the long run. Those guys are the ones that you need to protect because without your business, they won't have a business themselves. So always keep that aspect in mind. If you've got a good tool dealer, support that guy. Give him a chance to get the tools that you may be purchasing online or on Amazon. And I think at the end of the day, a lot of the times you'll see the small difference in price is well worth the service that you're gonna receive on the back end. Plus that builds a relationship with your tool truck guy because he understands you want to do business with you. Obviously, he's in the game to sell tools. He wants to earn your business. Give him a shot. Before jumping on Amazon and purchasing whatever tools you're looking at, give him a shot to get them in and just give him a try. Another great thing that tool trucks offer that you can't get on online purchases is the tool truck account. If you guys are not familiar with that, the way it works is most of them require a 10 week payment plan. That means you can purchase a tool, make small weekly payments that add up to the total amount within that 10 weeks and you pay 0% interest. That comes in really good on expensive purchases or purchases that cost a couple of hundred bucks. Take an example, if you want a USA made wrench set, you can't purchase one on the Matco truck because Matco doesn't offer a USA made wrench anymore. But if you're on a Snap-on truck, you're gonna pay well upwards of four to $500 for that set. Same way with Cornwell or Mac with their knuckle savers. You can ask your tool truck guy to order you the Right Grip 2.0 set. It's made right here in the United States and Ohio. An excellent wrench set for far less money and most of them will still allow you to have the tool truck account. So instead of forking over 400 bucks or $370 or whatever the price is, you can make a small weekly payment of about 30 to $40 a week and get the tools that you're wanting. It's an excellent advantage for a lot of us to afford the nicer tools that we may not could get if we have to pay the full price online. So take advantage of those options when you're on your tool truck. So I know the next point we're going to have to cover is I've read it before in the comments. What if I need a tool on a Tuesday? My guy runs on a Monday. I have to wait all week. Then he doesn't have the tool when he comes back the next week and blah, blah, blah. There's several programs now that allow tool trucks to service you when they're not even coming to your shop. For the guy that's tool truck runs on a Monday, if you decide Tuesday, hey, I would like to have this Koken 2726Z ratchet, other than calling your tool truck, there's programs such as we discussed when I was at the Mobile Tool Network warehouse, where the tool trucks can sign up their users under them. You can shop 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and still be able to support your local tool truck. It allows him to sell you this tool anytime and have it shipped to you, or he can have it shipped to the truck, whatever you prefer. And most of those guys will still allow you to make those weekly payments on the tool truck account to get all the tools you need. Just the availability of a tool truck is an excellent asset in my opinion because they bring the tools to you. I know, Amazon will have UPS bring it or FedEx or whatever. That's if they don't beat it to death in shipping and stomp it all to pieces and half the shit fall out before it gets to you because I've had that happen to me and it absolutely sucks. Granted, you can send it all back to Amazon, but after you wait through a couple of cycles, why not just pay a little extra money and get it from your tool guy? I don't know. I prefer the latter. I want to support my local guy. I appreciate the service that we did. You know, with Matt Hill Michael, I took a lot of ridicule when I purchased the Milwaukee 18 volt inflator pump from him. A lot of people said you could buy it from Home Depot. You can buy it from here. You can buy it from there. You can buy it from here. Yeah, but those guys didn't show up to my shop, have it on the truck the day I wanted it. And I'm kind of an instant guy. Like yeah, I'll pay a little more to get it right now and that way I can use it for whatever I've got in mind for. To me, that's worth, you know, the difference of 30% or 20% or whatever the difference in cost was. 
it really doesn't matter because Michael showed up with it and if I drop it tomorrow and bust the housing off of it, I know I can hand it back to Michael. He'll deal with shipping it back. And I know, I know, before you even say it, I know you can go online and fill out the paperwork when we walk in and send it back yourself. I, I'm not that guy. I had rather spend a little bit of money, hand it to my guy, get a replacement and be done with it. I'm not the guy that wants to hunt a box, tape it up, send it to the post office, fill out the forms online or whatever you have to do for Milwaukee Tools or any other company. I'm just not that guy. So, you know, to each his own, do what you want to do. But I can tell you, without the continued support, tool trucks are going to struggle more just simply because of the online presence of stores, Amazon and all these other companies. And it seems like, you know, Amazon is the worst culprit. Um, I've had several videos where I've showed products on here and we gave the exact screenshot of the stuff that was on sale. You know, say it was 36 bucks for this light. Within a couple of hours, this light will be $50. Um, it's something with Amazon's algorithm. I don't know, like the cheapest seller goes to the top. Once he sells out, the price goes up each tier as it goes along. And that kind of sucks, right? Because at the end of the day, you could have bought this truck, this light off your tool truck for the same money and maybe the second or third tier sellers got it for, and you'd have been able to get it right then from your guy, service it right there on the truck, and you're supporting the guy that comes to your shop and has a family and your kids play t-ball with them and all that stuff. That's important to me. But anyway, guys, that's my video. That's my opinion. Hopefully, you'll ask your tool dealer to look at the supplemental options that they have on tools if you're not willing to pay the super expensive premiums that they have on their name brand tools that they have. And remember, every single tool truck rebrands tools. They put their name on stuff that other people make. It's just how it is. No company makes everything that they have. So always look for that alternative. If we know that Maxion makes the snap-on lights, that Mayhew makes the pry bars, that Knipex makes the pliers, Trusty Cook makes the hammers, so forth and so on, you better bet your sweet ass, your tool truck guy knows that as well. So most of them will go to the option B and order you the supplemental stuff if they wanna close the sale. If your guys decide, hey, I don't wanna do that, you can't blame anybody but him for not continuing to service you and get you the tools that you ask him for. Then if you go to Amazon, it's kind of his fault at that point. So do what you gotta do, no big deal. Anyway guys, hopefully you like this. Check out all the tools your dealers can get you through their supplemental programs, their outside tools, whatever they wanna call it. And I'm going to close out with this. If your dealer tells you he can't get you these tools, He's probably not being honest with you and rather sell you the tool truck brand that he works for. And that's his priority. That's his option. You can't get mad at him. That's his business. He can choose to run it as he wishes. But remember, at least you give him the shot. And for you tool truck dealers, don't bitch when your customers purchase it online because they did give you that option. That's my video, guys, today. Hopefully you liked it. If you do, hit that thumbs up. Check over here for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes is in the description. And if you are not subscribed, all you gotta do is click that button. It's totally free, never costs you a dime. You guys have a great week. See ya.